Making a Molar Solution. We're going through today a couple tutorials about making solutions and this is part one. We're going to talk about today how to make a 1M solution. To give an example, if you see things in a laboratory, this is a 1M solution of tris hydrochloride. And that's how you want to make sure to label your solution after you've done it. So to give you some background, first we need to talk about what a mole is. So a mole is a chemical unit of measurement, and by definition, how it was set up, it was based on the number of particles that there are in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. And they could have picked something else, but this was the optimal substance for the definition, which you'll see in a moment. Um, and so the number of particles that there are in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12, what does this mean? Well, this really means the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. And um, in this pure substance, there are 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or particles. And this number is called Avogadro's number because it was named after the Italian Avogadro who determined it. And so the number of atoms in that much carbon is this exact number. And that means that when you're measuring one mole of carbon or of any other compound, you're measuring exactly Avogadro's number of molecules. So one mole of sodium chloride is exactly 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sodium chloride. And for each different compound, sodium chloride was just an example, we can determine how much one mole of it is based on weight. And one mole of each substance is a different weight. So our goal was to look at how to make a molar solution starting with a one molar solution. But of course there will be times when you have to make a half a molar solution, a five molar solution, so you just have to adjust the math accordingly. The standard is going to be a one molar solution. The definition of that is a solution that contains one mole of the solute per one liter of solution. In this demonstration we'll do sodium chloride. So the question is, how much is one mole of sodium chloride and how do we determine that? And is that Avogadro's number of sodium chloride molecules? The answer to that question is yes, it is exactly Avogadro's number of sodium chloride molecules. But now we need to think about how do we calculate the weight or the mass of one mole of our substance. And the rule is that one mole of a substance is equal to its atomic mass expressed in grams. So we're going to add the atomic mass or atomic weight of sodium to the atomic weight of chlorine to figure out the total weight of one molecule of sodium chloride. And that, expressed in grams, is going to be the exact mass of one mole of sodium chloride. So we'll see how that works. So next we're going to look at the periodic table for the atomic masses of the components that make up sodium chloride. So the best thing to do is to go to the periodic table. And where is the atomic number? First you have to make sure your periodic table has the numbers we need, and in this case this one does. So first we're going to look at sodium. And sodium is right over here. And we're going to blow it up so we can actually see it. So the atomic mass is a number that's listed right below the name. And in this case, sodium's atomic mass is 22.990. Obviously, the next part of sodium chloride is chlorine, and that's over here on the periodic table. And this atomic mass is 35.45. And because it's one atom of each making of sodium chloride, we're going to be adding the molecular weights in very simple form, one sodium to one chloride. So we're adding 22.990 plus 35.453, and this equals 58.443. So that means that the mass of one mole of sodium chloride is 58.44 grams. So a one molar solu solution of sodium chloride contains 58.44 grams of sodium chloride in every liter. So just to clarify, 58.44 grams per liter can also be written as 58.44 gm per L, 58.44 g per L, or 58.44 gm L to the negative one. So don't get confused when you see any of these ways of writing it. These are all, uh, these all mean 58.44 grams per liter. And you may also see the L 
for leader written in uppercase form, so don't get confused by that either. So now we're going to add another layer of complication, but don't worry. We figured out that a one molar solution of sodium chloride has 58.44 grams in every liter, but instead of a liter, we only need 200 milliliters of this solution for our experiment, so we need to modify our calculation. Instead of a full 58.44 grams of sodium chloride, we only need a fifth of that, since 200 milliliters is a fifth of a liter. So in the, in the math that we're going to write out, our step is to adjust the mass for the desired volume. So we see that 200 milliliters divided by 1 liter is equal to 0 0.200. 0 0.200, as you can see right here. First step. And so, thus, a 200 milliliter 1 molar solution of sodium chloride will contain 58.44 grams of sodium chloride multiplied by 0 0.2. And so 58.44 grams times 0 0.2 is equal to 11.69 grams. So 200 milliliters of our one molar solution contains 11.69 grams of sodium chloride. And so we adjusted for the volume we need so that now we'll know how much sodium chloride to put in 200 milliliters. And so now our next step is we need to weigh out 11.69 grams of sodium chloride and dissolve it in water for a final volume of 200 milliliters. So to do this, we need to go to the bench and see how that works. Before we begin, let's go over some safety precautions. When working with chemicals, it is important that your skin and eyes never come in direct contact with them. When working with dangerous chemicals or light powders that may become airborne, it is important to take proper precautions by wearing gloves or a mask. In this case, we are just working with sodium chloride, which is the equivalent of table salt. So we will not need to wear gloves or a mask. Let's gather our materials we will need. For this procedure, we will need sodium chloride, an electric balance, a glass graduated cylinder, a flask, a Sharpie to label with, a weigh boat with a spatula, And finally, a squirt bottle with nano pure water inside of it. First, place the empty container to be used to measure the compound onto the scale. Then click tear, or in this case, zero. This resets the scale's measurement to zero so that this container is not included in the measurement. Carefully pour sodium chloride into the container until the scale reads 11.69 grams. Add and remove small amounts of the compound carefully with the spatula until reaching a precise measurement. When you are done, don't forget to dispose of the dirty spatula by adding it to its proper jar for cleaning. Now take your flask and add about 150 milliliters of nanopure water to it. Keep in mind that nanopure water is not sterile. It has just been filtered further than distilled water. Normally for making molar solutions, we use nano pure water. Carefully pour the 11.69 grams of sodium chloride into the flask. Because this weigh boat is flexible, we are able to bend it and make it a funnel instead of having to use an actual funnel. Use the squirt bottle filled with nano pure water to rinse the remaining sodium chloride crystals out of the boat and into the flask. Now we will add the cap back to the flask and swirl the flask in order to dissolve the sodium chloride crystals. We will do this until the solution is clear and all the sodium chloride crystals are dissolved. Transfer your solution to the graduated cylinder using the funnel. use the squirt bottle to rinse the funnel in order to get any remaining crystals from it. Use the squirt bottle to add nanopure water to the graduated cylinder until the meniscus touches the 200 milliliters line. Label the container accordingly, making sure to note the concentration, which is one mole, 
the contents of the solution, sodium chloride, your name, and the date. Once you have finished, return all of your materials to their proper place and clean your workspace thoroughly. Now you have learned how to carry out the common laboratory procedure of calculating and creating a molar solution.